Hello and welcome to Dawn News English with 20 minutes. I'm Nadia Naki with you. Today we have with us Firdaus Naki Saab. Firdaus Naki Saab is a member of parliament of Sindh Assembly from Pakistan Tehreek Insaf. Earlier he was the leader of the opposition in Sindh Assembly. Thank you so much for joining us in 20 minutes. There's so much to discuss, but I'm going to start with your criticism on the appointment of Kamran Tesouri as governor Sindh. You've been very critical about it, Naki Saab. Why do you think that uh, Tesouri is not a good choice and at the same time not a choice of MQM? Well, uh, let me address it in two, three ways. One, Mr. Kamran Tesouri with his historical past of being an illegal builder and his family being related to the gold smuggling trade in Pakistan itself does not give very good background for a person who is being honored with the post of a governor in the province of Sen. Secondly, this very gentleman was thrown out of MQM four years back. And today, he is back just in 30 days. He has made it back, not only as the deputy convener of MQM, he has now been posted as the choice of MQM, which today I call as the Majboor Company movement, no longer the Muttehda Qami movement or the Mahajir Qami movement because this gentleman is a very rich person and he is actually supported by the establishment and it's the establishment which has proposed its name and MQM accepted it. Fine, it's their choice but not a very good choice. I believe this position should always be given to people as a position of honor for their achievements and service to the country in whatever field they were. Like Abdul Kalam was made president of India. What was he? Was he a political person? No. What actually he was, was he was the person who pioneered the nuclear program and they honored him by making him the president. And this is how we should behave in this country when these are ceremonial appointments. Nakwe sir, when you talk about that, you know, he has been appointee of the establishment, when you say he's rich, well, uh, PTI has had uh, a lot of sugar daddies too. The appointments in a lot, of, you know, once uh, the 2018 elections, we saw Khusro Bakhtiar, where did he come from and where is he now? Same for Jahangir Tareen, same about Aleem Khan. So you, your party too has a lot of appointees Khusra of the death establishment as well as the who were ATM machines for the former prime minister. So, you know, when you object on these kind of appointments, it, it comes as a surprise. No, Nadia, first and foremost, appointments to the federal government as ministers are political appointments. There you have to look at constituencies, you have to look at groupings. To satisfy all groupings, you have to do it. But these Somalian appointments, like the president or the governor of a province, are either party stalwarts or prominent citizens of the country. But the party has accepted it. MQM Pakistan uh, is all right with this. They've been congratulating Kamran Tesouri. So uh, why shouldn't we just leave it to their party, whoever they want to, you know, appoint no, no. as governor? It, 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 it is there. If, there. if he was such a great person, they shouldn't have thrown him out in the first place. So they threw him out four years back and they just took him on about 30 days back. What about the other people? Did we object to Nasreen Jali? It's a party decision. Would I have objected to Fajr Izar or Muhammad Hussain? No. But this is a person who, who may be a good person, but his reputation is not great. Okay. And I am no police or FIA or anti-corruption to level charges against him of his corruption. But yes, the Supreme Court of Pakistan gave a decision and demolished his building, which was under construction, that this is an encroached land that he did not follow the proper rules as required under the law. So person who is not, and that building's name is Tajori Heights, and it was in Gulshan Iqbal. Not that I'm going to defend any of this, but at the same time makes me realize what Halim Adil Sheikh is up to, what cases he has. Why do you think if you are alleging that he is an appointee of the establishment, what would establishment gain out of Kamran Tesouri's appointment. The last nail in the coffin of MQM. They're out. 
to destroy Altaf Hussain and his party. But it looks like that MQM, due to its own infighting and the exploitation, has been divided into many factions. And those who are staunch followers of MQM, this appointment of Kamran Tesori is a big slap on their face. Despite all their contribution over since 1984, this party has been in existence now for 38 years. Where does this upstart come from? <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, because you know, you've been very critical of MQM and suddenly Firdaus Nafis are feeling so much, so emotional about no, it. No, you know? no, no, no. Sorry, let me clarify. Mm. MQM is the destroyer of urban sin. They are the ones who started the Bhatta culture. They are the ones who gave the present of Bori Mad Lashe. Under Altaf Hussain, the city, city and the urban areas of Sin have suffered. That MQM is over. That MQM was cannot, over long back. We cannot, we cannot ever forgive this party as an Urdu speaking person okay. who have destroyed three generations of Urdu speaking people. And that's why you probably had them as allies in your government in 2018, right? I think I, uh, Nadia, you had heard my comments even at that time. I had called them Majburi. That to form the government, we either had PPP, PMLN, MQM. Out of these three, the least of the evils was MQM. Okay, so now let's come to NA239 for which you're leading the campaign. How difficult is the campaign now? Because you actually don't have a candidate to fail in the sense that former Prime Minister Imran Khan and the chair, party's chairman is contesting from all the constituency all right. elections. First and foremost, first and foremost, we are not treating it as a campaign for a candidate. We are treating it as a referendum for Pakistan Tehri Ki we are treating it as a referendum of the statements of Imran Khan made on the floor of the house as well as in the many jalsas that there was a conspiracy that he was made to suffer because of the conspiracy. There is an outside intervention in Pakistan by a foreign country. And if the people of Pakistan believe Imran Khan to be speaking the truth, they should wait for vote for Imran Khan. The same conspiracy that has been one, 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 one minute, by one, the one, president one, of Pakistan, Nakhvi Saab. One minute, Mr. one minute, Arif let me complete it. Let me just complete Nadia and I'll take the question. Hmm. Sure. 123 MNA resigned. Hmm. Why only nine, 11 people's resignation was accepted? They should have, why was the decision not taken simultaneously for everyone? Now you were asking about Arif Alvi's statement yesterday. I think so. He himself has tweeted that you are that the people have taken it out of context because that anchor is a biased anchor. I am sorry to say that she has a very strong bias and she has interpreted it I'm wrong. very sorry. The way I Nafi interpret Nafi Arif Alvi. On record, you can hear the entire, I have watched the entire interview. He says it, I don't believe it's a conspiracy, but I feel that if there is something, there should be investigation for which I have written a letter to the Chief Justice of Pakistan. He can source narrative right now of the conspiracy. Seriously, that's a blow to, to that by Arif Alvi. But nevertheless, he said it that he himself believes there is no conspiracy. First and foremost, Arif Alvi has given a reason why PDM should support him and allow and support a judicial inquiry into this matter. If he succeeds in that, then I would salute him. Good job. Secondly, Arif Alvi is not a part of the cabinet where this issue was discussed in this year, where the entire cabinet agreed that this has been a conspiracy to not one person. So Arif Alvi should first see in the president of Pakistan he should have sought all the details, talk to the foreign secretary, call him over, talk mm -hmm. to the then foreign minister and then give him his opinion and then he has a right to his opinion. This country has been ruled for more than 35 years directly by the generals of Pakistan army and indirectly for last 75 years. 
including including when uh, Imran Khan including was the prime minister. Including three and a half years of Imran Khan, if that's the question. Yes. So he was a toothless prime minister. You mean to say? No. Uh, we yes. were on the same page. <laughs> we were on the same page. Just because, just because Imran Khan wanted to stay as the prime minister at that point. No, every one no, of no, you, no, no. every one of you no. was talking about same page. The fact of the matter is that we wanted to promote our own agendas, like the health card, the climate change, the finance. We to do that, if we had to make some compromises with the establishment, we did, and I'll not deny that. That's but not true compromises, Nabisa. That's a huge compromise. Throw us. You're letting civilian why? supremacy. You're just giving it away. No, 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 no. If we would have culped, what you say, capitulated in front of them, then today we would not have been out of power. We never capitulated, and that's when they could not bear the differences anymore. They decided to throw us out. The main issues of dispute, America, how would it have left Afghanistan, which would be the force, which would be there to ensure that this country is not overrun by Taliban again. For that, an international force was to be created, an international force consisting of troops from the Islamic countries. And who do you think so would be the major contributor? Pakistan. Therefore, we would not be willing to contribute, nor would we allow. When the troops had to be evacuated, that our land and bases be used by drones or by aircraft okay. for bombing okay. Pakistan. That's, that's a very very that's that's, that's, that's a very, very different. different point that you have raised but up till now we know what is from 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 what point exactly establishment and pti especially imran khan saab had differences i just want to know one thing uh, today when imran khan saab addresses public rallies and he criticizes uh, by calling the neutrals and all 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 his speeches he's just saying if you're going to side with pdm and those parties you're not good you got to side with me in order to be acceptable. So you're again inviting the same, same no, establishment so. to support you. They can't be neutral. They don't have to be political. They must have a view on right and wrong. You cannot say that those who steal from this country are okay. We'll remain neutral. We'll remain silent. Those who are willing to compromise the interest of the country to a foreign power, we will remain silent. No, you have to remain politically neutral. You will not interfere in the elections. You will not support one political party against another. But you must have a view on Pakistan. We were still asking them to support the government, not PTI as a party. They are bound as a constitutional duty to support the government of Pakistan. Government of Pakistan and still have a view that those who are in the government of Pakistan and running the government of Pakistan should not work against Pakistan. Okay, so you mean to say that all the allies that left PTI, they were forced to leave PTI for the no confidence motion? Is it not obvious? Do you really think so? I can tell you that they had asked that if we receive even a telephone call from the right kind of colonel, we will vote for you. That's MQM. That's MQM. The least of the evils. I believe in stating something which I have heard myself. I am not, I did okay. not state about BAP. I am only talking about because this they can't deny on my face. And I would okay. be willing to take an oath on my honor and on anything else which other people this that this is i've heard it through my own ears not face to face on telephone but they never had a good relation i mean imran khan saab has said it on record that you know whenever i wanted any kind of laws to be passed i needed to uh, tell the agency to uh, to call the allies and come and vote 
and that's why i believe that i should come with two third majority because you know having a coalition uh, government is always difficult no i think so nadia the reason for asking for the public to vote two third is that the judiciary has totally failed us the accountability organizations has totally failed us as pti as a party to implement what we think so would have been the right direction towards the end do you see pti winning um, in, in in the upcoming by elections i am not only i am confident it will win all seats the mood in punjab the na245 results all indicate that the people of pakistan the attendance at the public gatherings are all proof that the people of pakistan today is are behind pti and the sale in our wins uh, the wind in our sales is pretty strong so if you win as you're saying and as you uh, clearly mentioned about punjab by elections where you had 115 seats even then you would blame the chief election commissioner who heads the election commission of pakistan responsible for conducting these by elections and many that will take place despite all odds we are winning those seats in punjab which we won were the seats where actually independence had won if he is not is on then how would you be able to win the upcoming by elections if this is the allegation that has been leveled against him time and again how do you believe you will win because we have done it na245 all parties all parties together that was a seat which farooq sattar was claiming he had won let me let me give you a proof of his partisanship there were three by elections to be held in karachi the national assembly speaker had accepted the resignation of all nine how is shakur shadri instated by election commission of pakistan the okay, supreme so court had already given a judgment that we will not interfere in the ruling of the speaker of the assembly he went to how the court can, saying that he did how, not his his resignation how, was i'm sorry He went to the court. I am sorry, Nadia. I am sorry. Look at the videos where he has filed the application of Imran Khan, where he himself has filed an application. It's on video, on record for contesting election. If he had not resigned, why did he do that? It just shows that how things are manipulated in this country. The judicial system is not working. And that's why PTI also went to the judicial court. Judicial system in this country has all the elections, all the resignations, and not just nine or ten or eleven, because we had resigned unanimously, and all sh- we had resigned because on the condition that every resignation is going to be accepted. It's very difficult to actually, you know, when a person who is you're a you're a member of the assembly tomorrow, let's say out of all the unanimous resignations that you all do. and you stand up and go to the court that no i haven't resigned what should the court say oh no, 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 no. i am saying why did he want to file an application for recontesting article 62 63 that should be raised against this man he has been dishonest he has been totally dishonest it is in front of the returning officer that an application was filed a returning officer is a judicial officer but that's not being taken into consideration so you are saying that everyone is going against yes. you the election commission is against you the yes, current staff the election is against you i am you. giving you a straight proof uh-huh. foreign countries are against pti i mean uh, uh, nakvi sahab okay do you I believe just... do you believe that the people of the town government why did they not call the bomb atomic bomb of india as the hindu bomb why is it referred to the pak bomb by pakistan as islamic bomb is not the west interested in the rollback of our nuclear program there are things which islamophobia has promoted and that's what imran khan was standing for that the world must change its outlook towards pakistan I'm sorry? so sorry, but you know we are just running out of time. We have to close the show, Nakvi Sir. But thank you so much for this detailed discussion. Answers a lot of questions and raises a lot of question too. 
but um, you know in coming days after the by elections let's see what the results are going to be we're going to have another session with you that's all for now take care of yourself goodbye